technology, science, space, environment, people, places. It's all totally awesome. Hi, and welcome to Totally Awesome. On today's show, virtual reality and how it's helping with space research. An academy full of great inventors. Solving crimes with the help of science. And a world record that'll take your breath away. Whether you are a sailor, pilot, builder, farmer, or just wanting to play a game of football, the weather may play an important role in your day. The Met Office is the place where all the information about the weather is gathered and then sent onto the radio and television stations for broadcasting. The latest news, though, is getting your weather forecast on your mobile telephone. This convenient way of checking out what to wear for the day means that all you need to do is key in the address code of where you are and in 10 seconds you'll receive a six hour weather forecast, get this, accurate to a five kilometre radius. The Met Office uses technology like satellites and radars to give accurate forecasts every hour. This information is especially handy for farmers waiting to plant crops because their day is quite often controlled by the weather. So whether you have a special game coming up or just a weekend outdoors, now you'll know exactly what to wear. With one in six children now suffering breathing difficulties such as asthma, it's important that we are constantly looking at ways to improve our environment. These school children have been taking part in a tree planting world record. 140,000 trees have been planted with the aim of promoting the conservation of trees and to highlight their importance in our world. Trees not only look good and give us shade on a sunny day, they also trap the pollution that comes from traffic. A tree-lined street can cut the pollution level by 90% compared to a street with no trees. And they look so good. They are also an important tool in stopping floods. The children enjoyed their work and learning a lesson about why they were planting so many saplings. Cutting down on greenhouse emission is so important that exercises like this one are sure to become a normal part of school learning. Have you ever heard of virtual reality? Well, the development of this tool is giving scientists the chance to look into exploring planets and at the same time providing information for great uses here on Earth. Scientists from NASA's Jet Propulsion Lab have digitally changed spacecraft information from Venus to give us an unreal view of its surface. They have done this by strapping on 3D visual display goggles and special censored gloves. Now you can be there, right on another planet. Well, virtually. Virtual reality is an idea that dates back to the 60s and is becoming quite a common tool. The American bobsled team practiced their skills for the Olympics with a form of virtual reality. And the Japanese have also developed a system that allows architects to walk clients through a virtual building before it's built. The use is endless and the thought of having a go sounds like a great adventure.
if you were a budding inventor with plenty of great ideas, where would you go to show how your invention works? How would you put them together? Here at the museum, inventions from the past and the future give budding enthusiasts an idea of how tools have come to be part of our lives, and they all started with a simple idea. In 1822, Charles Babbage invented the difference engine and then the analytical engine. Neither a useful tool for their time. However, now they are considered to be the very early start of the computer. No matter how innovative your idea is, it needs funding or sponsorship to turn the product into reality. Some inventors are so way ahead of their time that the invention seems of little practical use. <laughs> you can't see me speaking. Trevor Bayliss is an inventor among other things. His most famous invention is the batteryless clockwork radio. It took him three years to develop a prototype in 1994 and it is now distributed worldwide. Right, let's go into the workshop. Which is in a bit of a state. Students of engineering, businesses and other related fields come from universities to meet and talk with Trevor and learn how he has managed to create a successful invention. It looks a bit pathetic, but this one, you know... Inventions are often created out of need. 200 years ago, when sources of energy were being discovered, like coal, it made sense to work out a way to get them out of the ground. This created a need for pumps. Thomas Newcomen designed steam pumps. They were then improved and steam power was used for other purposes. Half an hour with one minute wine, whatever the people that blew me away. So you know, ten years In ago, most you cases, know, inventions are and improvement on existing well. ideas. Take James Dyson, for example. He is the man who revolutionised the vacuum <coughs> cleaner. He believed that an invention should not only be original, it should also be pleasant to use and sturdy as well. Making a product that is attractive to look at was the main aim of the last half of the 20th century. Inventors were as concerned with the look of their inventions as they were with the technical side of it. In this quiet countryside, Dryson has set up his manufacturing base. It is also the headquarters of Dyson vacuum cleaners and more recently Dyson washing machines. Both these pieces of household equipment have unique aspects. The vacuum cleaner has no bag and does not lose suction. And the washing machine is groovy to look at and handy to use. Most inventors get involved in their projects so closely that they are unable to assess the marketplace and the passion for the project takes over. Whether it be the everlasting flat torch, a great commercial success, or the buzz pen, a pen that creates a variety of different and clever phrases each time it's pressed, inventions are all part of science. Everyone can have a go at it. Hopefully each new invention will contribute to the improvement in the way we all live. There were a few tense moments for scientists and their families last year as the launch time approached. The project was a day later than scheduled and the previous attempt had resulted in an explosion. This time, however, was the right time and the European Space Agency's cluster mission blasted off safely. The mission is set to take two years and is about investigating the relationship between the Sun and the Earth. Four satellites are now in space, gathering information about the Sun's radiation and how the Earth's magnetic fields protect us from hot gases, 
particles and waves that stream out regularly from the sun. The magnetic barrier that surrounds the Earth is like a protective bubble. It protects the Earth from solar winds by deflecting them. Sometimes it gets damaged and the particles get in. The cluster satellites will fly through the field and solar wind to find out what happens. These particles can damage communications, navigation satellites and cause disruption of power systems. It is therefore really useful to find out what's going on in space so that we can predict what is about to happen here on Earth. When we can do this, we can make safe our satellites and power systems and be aware of any coming event. This space observatory monitors the sun and has pictures of some flares. The white scratches show the damage the solar wind has done to the camera. The aurora borealis, or northern lights, are the most visible signs of solar weather hitting the Earth's magnetic shield. The mission will be able to give scientists much needed information so that they can see when these events are going to happen and protect the communication systems we rely on so heavily. know that the dry valleys of Antarctica have been of interest to scientists recently? This is because the land is so similar to the surface of Mars. The frozen lakes contain primitive microscopic gnats that live in water below many feet of ice. Researchers are planning to use a form of virtual reality called telepresence to operate a remote controlled vehicle that can photograph and pick up small samples in this bizarre world. The potential of virtual reality and telepresence in the science world is very exciting. And the chances are that the experiments of today and the research gathered may help produce products we use in the future. DNA is a unique pattern that makes us all different from one another. It is such a special form of identification. Police and investigators are now using it to trace people who have been involved in crimes. The Forensic Science Service has a number of specialised DNA profiling analysis services available. And even the minute amount of DNA left at a crime scene can result in a positive identification and conviction. The technology is so advanced that all that is needed is one millionth of a gram. That can be as little as someone touching a surface with a fingertip. The science is especially helpful in cases dating back up to 30 years in which forensic evidence has been stored. When there have been crimes with no suspect linked to a DNA profile, police have been able to gather leads by asking target groups in the community to give voluntary DNA samples. The result of this has been a match of 68,000 suspects to crimes. Hello there. Can you stop this evening? It's time for the drink glass for campaign for Christmas. It's very simple, this device. This technology is expanding at a rapid rate and soon, just as police have blood alcohol testing equipment, forensic scientists will be using handheld DNA detectors at crime scenes. And if it, uh, if it moves your position further than that, which it has done, I'm afraid you've given me a positive breath test and I'm now arresting you for drink. <laughs> Imagine being able to hold your breath for six minutes, not that we want you to try. Here in Cyprus, an amazing world record is just about to take place. 
Trevor Hutton is a deep sea diver and here he is attempting a free dive of 73 metres in what is known as the apnea discipline. He is able to descend on a line with no weights, fins or oxygen tank. He has a diving pulse rate of just 12 beats per minute. With a lung volume of 9 litres, it's no wonder this underwater adventure has been dubbed the man from Atlantis. Surrounded by a huge support team, Trevor descends to 73 metres. But on the way back, disaster strikes. And Trevor blacks out and has to be helped to safety, not quite reaching the world record. Just 24 hours later, the diver is keen to make another attempt. This time, he arrives fully kitted and ready to go. Unfortunately, the second attempt goes the same way and support divers again come to the rescue. At this stage, there's no question of another event. Such death-defying acts take time to plan, and Trevor is set on having another go in the future. Robots fighting robots. It could be a scene from the latest sci-fi movie. These steely giants are the product of people's brain power, creativity and engineering, made in garden sheds and universities around the globe. Auditioning for a television series aptly called Robot Wars has motivated inventors from all around to create the perfect machine with the capacity to destroy. 300 robots will do battle in the arena to become one of the chosen 96 for the series. How would you like a pet like this one? Not exactly the most cuddly of characters, is he? Although they certainly could be handy around the house. Just look at that action. You sure make short work of wood chopping. And this guy sure does clean up after himself. Just don't let him near your car. Fathers and sons around the globe have been glued to the drawing board with the aim of creating the perfect machine that is low maintenance, low cost and great fun. The audition itself has attracted over 1,000 applications, but only 300 robots will get the chance to do battle in the fiery arena. Not only have these robots begun a life of fame and fortune, they have also started a whole new range of toys available in toy shops. Fans, young and old, watch with excitement to see who will be the hero of the battle, and inventors get set to put new ideas into action once again. Cheeseburgers, chips, lollies. Imagine being able to eat all these things without getting fat. It'll never happen. There has been a discovery though, but its main aim is to help people with real trouble fighting oh, obesity. Okay. Scientists say that these transgenic mice hold the key to tackling obesity in humans. The ravenous rodents are able to overeat, in fact pig out, and yet they don't put on any weight. This is because they are carrying a human gene called uncoupling protein 3, or UCP3, 
which works with the energy centre of the human cells. Extra UCP3 causes the body to burn off energy as heat, rather than converting it to fuel and then storing it as fat in the body. This research is giving scientists a head start in developing an anti-obesity drug, but it is still in its early days and the drug will probably be about a decade away. And it won't be as easy as taking a tablet and you'll lose weight. It will be used with a good calorie controlled diet, so the lollies and the chips are still out. Whilst doing the research, scientists also found that UCP3 creates an improved sensitivity to insulin, a hormone the body produces to control your blood sugar level. This indicates that there may be some benefits for diabetes sufferers. Scientists warn that this won't be a quick fix to stay true.